Hello, crafty friends. My name's Alicia, but you can call me Crafty Owl. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how I made my first set of cards using the May 2023 sheet load of cards. I hope you'll stick around, see how they're made, and get a few tips along the way. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. Yesterday, I shared a look at the brand new sheet load of cards, May 2023, and told you how you could download that for free if you're a subscriber to my channel. Well, today I'm back to show you how I made my first set. Also today, my team of collaborators will be joining me and sharing their cards. I have collaborators here on YouTube and over on Instagram. To see what they've all created, there are a few different ways. First of all, go ahead and try that hashtag in the title. Sometimes it cooperates and just brings them right up. Now, if that seems to be acting up, I do have a playlist linked in the description box and I will get everybody's videos added just as soon as I can. Now, if neither of those work for the YouTube videos, I do have links to everybody's channel in the description box below. To see my Instagram team members, it is super simple. I have a link to the direct hashtag search in the description box. I hope that you'll take a few minutes to stop by and see what everybody created and leave them some love. The May 2023 sheet load of cards is a great one to build up your card stash or get started on those holiday cards. With just two pieces of 12 by 12 pattern paper and some cardstock, you're going to yield 12 A2 cards. Now, if you haven't yet downloaded the free printable and you would like to, I do have yesterday's debut video linked in the description box and I go through and tell you how you can download that. As always, it is free to subscribers of my channel. I gave you a peek at the supplies I'll be using today in yesterday's video, but once I start the process, I will tell you more about those and anything else I bring in to create my cards. As always, if I ever leave you with any questions, you can leave those in that comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! I'm going to get started today by cutting my pattern papers per the cutting guides and one thing I do want to point out is that this month I gave you some suggestions on how you can use the leftover scraps to decorate the inside of your cards so later I'll show you how to do that. Before I can make my first cut, I do need to cut the branding strip off each sheet. For today's cards, I'm using two pieces from Vicki Booten's Where To Next collection. Once those branding strips are cut off, you'll want to make sure if your paper has a direction, you keep that in mind when you make your first cut. And I will actually be cutting three quarters of an inch off the left edge for the piece B. Then to make sure I have that large scrap left at the bottom for my leftover suggestion, I will rotate the piece of paper and cut two rows that are five inches tall, and these will be piece A's. For now, I'm just going to set the scrap to the side and keep cutting my main pieces. That skinny strip gets cut into six pieces that are two inches tall. And because this will take up the entire height, make sure not to do generous cuts. Cut it right at two inches. Then finally, I'm going to rotate the pieces for piece A and cut each of these into three pieces that are three and three quarters inches wide. While I work on cutting that second piece of pattern paper, I wanted to take a minute to recognize a few special channel members. I recently had some reach one year of membership in the month of April. So up on screen now are their names. I just want to say thank you for your continued support. It means so much.
thanks so much to each and every one of you as well as all of my channel members. You keep me creating here on YouTube and sheetload of cards free for all subscribers. If you're ever interested in finding out more about the perks of channel membership, I do have a link in the description box below or you can click on the join button below this video for more information. Now let's work on cutting the cardstock. I'm going to start with three pieces for CS1 and we will cut each of these into four, four inch by five and a quarter inch pieces. To get started, I cut two rows from each sheet that were five and a quarter inches tall. Now there are some skinny strips left over, which I will hang on to later in case I want to make a card from scraps or use them for stamping sentiments. Once those cuts were made, I rotated each piece and cut them into four inch wide pieces and I just kept cutting until I have 12 total. For CS2, I'm going to be using one and a half pieces of that same color cardstock and I'm going to yield 12 pieces that are 3.375 inches by two and a quarter inches. Please note that 3.375 is the same as three and three eighths. I'm gonna start by cutting columns that are the three and three eighths inches wide, and three and three eighths inches is the halfway point between three and a quarter and three and a half on your trimmer. I make these cuts to both the full sheet and the half sheet, and then once those are cut to the width, I'm going to rotate each of them and cut into pieces that are two and a quarter inches tall. Once again, I just keep cutting until I have 12 total pieces. Next, I brought in one piece of white cardstock to cut down for CS3. These are going to end up being my sentiment pieces, and I need 12 that are three and a quarter by two inches. So I'm going to start by cutting the three and a quarter inch wide strips, and then rotate those pieces and cut them to two inches tall. Now your final step might be to take your six pieces of cardstock and cut and fold those in half to 12 card bases, but I already had some pre-made in my stash, so I grabbed those. The sketch and my cards do open at the top, but if you prefer a side fold, you can definitely do that as well. Now that all of the pieces are cut, we can start to do some assembly. Because piece B will go on the left side of my sentiment piece, I want to go ahead and adhere those together before I do my stamping. This way I know exactly what area I need to center my sentiment in. This strip just gets adhered flat down to the left edge of the white cardstock piece. Once those were all adhered together, I went ahead and brought in my Misty, my ink, and the stamp which I'll be using. I am using Life is Better With You, which is from Pretty Pink Posh's Simple Saying Life stamp set. For my ink to go with the blue in the pattern paper, I'm using Gina K Designs Tranquil Teal. Once I have my sentiment centered in the white area of the sentiment piece, I ink it up and get it stamped. With the Misty, I just have to set it up once and then I can stamp all 12 sentiments. Next, I wanted to get that stamped piece matted with CS2. And if you look at the sketch, those two pieces align on the left side. You'll have that even border on the top, right, and bottom. Now, when I need stuff to align like this, I find it's easy to bring in something with a ledge. For me today, I'm gonna use my Mini Misty, but you could use a scoreboard, a trimmer, whatever you have available. To do this, I'm gonna add adhesive to the back of my sentiment, and then I place my pink mat and I line it right up with that ledge. Then I center my stamp piece as best as possible left to right and push it against the ledge as well. This I feel is just easier than trying to eyeball it or do it without any help. I continued adhering those two pieces together until all 12 were matted. I moved on to the larger pieces from the card, matting pattern paper A with CS1. This will just be centered for a nice even 1 8 inch border all the way around. Once again, I continued matting these until all 12 were done, and then it was time to get my sentiments added. 
just like when we matted the stamped piece, we are now going to put that piece onto the card front and align that edge with the left edge of the pattern paper. Now with the two patterns to mix them up, all I had to do was switch those piles. So I will be putting the one with the pink pattern on the left on top of the floral and the one with the floral on top of the pink background. Now you could definitely move this up or down if you wanted on that card front. Again, make it yours. You could even rotate the card front and make it a landscape card. After all 12 of those were put together, these pieces then got centered on the front of the card base. Again, about an eighth of an inch border all the way around. Now we could stop here and call the cards done, maybe go ahead and add some bling, but I'm going to show you now how we're going to use those leftover pattern paper scraps to decorate the inside of each of the cards. I'm going to start by cutting two pieces that are four inches wide from each of those pattern paper scraps. Then with the end that's left over, I'm going to cut that into one half inch wide sections. I'll move from left to right, lining it up with the half inch mark to the left of my cut line. And then when I get to where my fingers don't fit, I bring in my removable tape to hold that in place. And I'll use that for the last couple cuts and I'll be able to use it on the other pieces as well. Now once those are done, I'm going to take the first two pieces I cut and cut these into one half inch tall strips. And I just keep cutting like this until everything is done, both the pink paper and the floral. And here is a look at all of those finished. And while I was off camera, I did go ahead and cut the angle into the bottom of each of the skinny strips. These pieces then got placed on the inside of the cards. The four inch by one half inch strips I put at the bottom with an even border on the outsides and then the skinny one with the angle at the bottom got put up near the fold. I just like the added decoration this gives your cards and it uses up some of those scraps right away. I continued adding these to each of the cards until they were done and then it was time to finish off the cards with a little bling. If you've been around my channel long, you know that I love to use these Elizabeth Craft Designs clear glitter dots. Not only do they add a little touch of sparkle, but they're nice and flat for mailing. For today's cards, I decided to use the transparent silver, which they are all circles with a silver frame and they're clear in the middle with some glitter added to it. I added a trio to the front of each card and here are some close up looks at the finished set. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I put my first set of cards together using the May 2023 sheet load of cards. If you did, as always, a thumbs up is appreciated. Now don't forget to go visit all of the other collaborators, see what they've created, and leave them some love. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you are interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box below.